Our next story celebrates one of the greatest perverts in European history. His name is Zacher Mazok, and oh. it is from him that we get the word masochism, like oh. sadomasochism, one of my favorite leisure activities. Personally, I feel that all healthy relationships have an element of SNM. For example, in our relationship, I'm a bit sadistic because I torture and degrade Jean-Paul, and he's a bit masochistic because he likes it. But uh, no, I don't like it at all, Antoine. <laughs> of course you like it. If not, why would you come back every week for more? Because I want to be on television, you know? I would do anything to be on television. Now, let me try your whippy. You do not touch my whippy. You must carry out my demands, be they good or bad. Even when I tell you to commit crimes, you must commit them. Without me, you are nothing. I am For anyone who's ever stuck on a nipple clamp or tied up a loved one, there's one man who you should thank. Author, playwright and sexual pioneer Leopold von Sacker Masoch. Sacker Masoch wrote the red-hot, sizzling novel Venus in Furs, which became the bondage bible. On the centenary of his death, Eurotrash went to his Austrian homeland to celebrate the life, work and wounds of this tortured genius. Sakamasok has been branded by the sexologist Kraft Ebbing's definition of him, using his surname for the phrase masochist. And I think this put a lot of people off Sakamasok's books. It hasn't always been like that, you see, when he started off. He was a well-respected author, but after this definition, people simply regarded him as a pervert. I've known a lot of people who've adored and worshipped my great-great-uncle. I mean, Velvet Underground, Nico, a lot of people. And if ever I really wanted to sort of, sort of make people's jaw drop, when I was really young, I used to just sort of pull myself together and say, well, you know, my great-great-uncle was Leopold Sakamazov. <laughs> and they just, it was a showstopper. Eurotrash got on board the bondage bandwagon with the Libertine Association, an Austrian group of S&M aficionados who are going to celebrate the great man's centenary in his hometown of Graz. The intention of the Libertine Association is to heighten the profile of sadomasochism, to make it more acceptable to the man in the street. Our mission is to free people, to allow them to live out their fantasies. People shouldn't think of it as simply domination. It's based on the voluntary give and take of pleasure between consenting adults. In fact, sadomasochism has already hit the mainstream in a hard way, from fetish-themed nightclubs to bondage gear on the world's catwalks. The fashion designers see something that has become something that was underground, that was not mainstream. They've seen its profile raised slightly once people started to make statements about themselves, once programs started to be made about a certain way of living, and they think, aha, we can make money. And they make money. But Saka Masok didn't make much money for his suffering. After he published Venus in Furs, his life began to imitate his art. And he descended into a world where the only pleasure was pain. Don't stop. I know about my background, and I am very careful. I suppose I must be afraid of sort of latent masochism coming. I really don't need that. You know, I've had enough troubles in my life. We rejoin the Libertines at the end of their pilgrimage at Saka Masok's house with an alfresco reading of the master's verse. You may not be a son, brother or friend. You are nothing but a slave that crawls in the dust. I possess your body and soul, even when you suffer atrocious torment. But as they say, no pain, no gain. And the Libertines round off the day with a lash against the ash. Oh. He did something extraordinary, and I don't even understand it all, but it would, we would be very much poorer without him, definitely. <laughs>